Good evening, dear listeners, and welcome back to another bone-chilling episode of Our Scary Stories. I'm your host, inviting you to step into the shadows and face the fear. Tonight, we delve beneath the city's surface into the haunting echoes of a hidden world. It's a place where the forgotten dwell and an ancient entity lurks, calling out from the depths. Prepare to journey alongside Solomon, our unlikely hero, a denizen of the city's forgotten corners, as he navigates the sprawling labyrinth beneath the metropolis. Brace yourselves, dear listeners, as we descend into the darkness, where secrets lie buried and echoes of the lost resonate. Hold tight, for the city's heartbeat is about to reveal its chilling secret. In the twilight shadow of the sprawling metropolis, Solomon's world was a constellation of dim street lamps, whispers of wind, and the muted hum of the distant city. His existence, fragmented, teetered on the edges of this urban expanse, part human, part ghost. His beard, thick and peppered with the salt of his fifty years, veiled a weathered face that bore the harsh etchings of homelessness. The discarded newspaper he wore as a makeshift blanket rustled against the grating of his makeshift bed, the ink-stained testament of other people's lives merging with his own. The cobbled alleyway, his domain, was a thread in the city's vast tapestry, somewhere between the forgotten and the unseen. The city around him pulsed with life. The pungent smell of wet asphalt after rain, the distant echo of a jazz band, the taste of stolen crumbs from a bakery's back door, every sense tethered him to the city that he was a part of, yet apart from. But as days gave way to nights and nights to days in a blur of grays and blues, Solomon noticed something sinister. The regulars, the ones whose faces had become as familiar as the graffiti adorning the city walls, began disappearing. First, it was old Murdoch, then spirited Annie with her cat, Bones. A disturbing pattern emerged, like a stain spreading across the fabric of his world. In the quieter hours, when the city's heartbeat slowed, Solomon took to wandering, charting the last known haunts of his vanished companions. He sought answers in the overlooked spaces. The city's pulse was irregular, skipping beats where it shouldn't. The tangles of the old city's underground, the sewers, the old subways, the forgotten bomb shelters, seemed to echo this disquietude. One evening, under the diffuse glow of a flickering neon sign, Solomon peered into an open manhole, its rusted iron cover pushed askew. Cool air whispered from the dark void, carrying with it an undercurrent of something vaguely menacing, like a rancid smell or a discordant note. A shiver brushed Solomon's spine as he peered down, staring into an abyss that seemed to pulse, its rhythm in sync with the city's own uneasy heartbeat. In this moment, Solomon, armed with a makeshift lantern, a stolen flashlight duct taped to a yardstick, resolved to follow the city's ominous pulse into its black veins. He stepped onto the cold iron ladder, his worn-out boots echoing a grim dirge against the hollow rungs, as he descended into the city's gaping mall. His path, marked with pieces of string tied to rusty pipes, wove its way through damp brick tunnels. The smell of wet earth and something ancient filled his nostrils, and the echo of dripping water kept time with his own heartbeat. With every step, he moved further from the city's glaring lights and deeper into its mystery. For he, Solomon, the city's overlooked son, had become its self-appointed guardian. Unseen but vigilant, he ventured into the unknown, determined to expose the disquieting truth hidden in the veins of the metropolis. With each new dawn, while the metropolis above stretched and grown back to life, Solomon descended into the silent depths beneath. The mundane routine of waking city life provided a stark contrast to his solitary mission. He had become a specter of the underworld, an emissary straddling two realms. His life was a twisted reflection of the city's routine, his day beginning when most ended. As the city's heart pounded with life above, Solomon navigated its silent, echo-filled arteries beneath, following the ominous rhythm that seemed a harbinger of the city's secret terror. As days turned into weeks, Solomon's map evolved into a complicated maze of lines and symbols. His world now echoed with the drip-drip of condensation on the old bricks and the shuffle of his boots on the stone floor. His senses had adapted to the underground's unique cadence, his eyes piercing the stubborn darkness, his ears picking up the faintest of sounds, his skin reacting to the smallest shift in the air. The earthy, metallic tongue of the ancient catacombs became his constant companion. One day, after an endless descent, he found himself standing before a colossal iron gate, oxidized with time, studded with unfamiliar symbols. It loomed overhead, marking the threshold of a realm within a realm. A shudder of anticipation swept through Solomon. 
The air here was different, dense, as if filled with centuries-old whispers and sighs, and carried a strange, metallic scent. The gate's ancient, eerie presence told untold stories, a sentinel to the metropolis's buried secret. Using all his strength, he pushed the gate, its iron bones creaking in protest before giving way. As he stepped through the gate, a wave of chilled air embraced him, bringing with it a silence that seemed almost sacred. He found himself in a sprawling cavern, its domed ceiling lost in shadow. Stalactites hung low like aged chandeliers, their tips glistening in the lantern's light. Across the cavern, embedded in the rocky wall, was a large, smooth stone face, an unnerving monolith etched with the same jagged symbol he'd found before. A soft, mournful sigh echoed through the cavern, stirring the still air. Solomon felt it wash over him, an invisible tide tugging at the edges of his courage. His heart pounded, a loud drum in the hushed cavern, but he was resolved to face whatever lurked within this subterranean city. His journey had brought him to the threshold of the underworld, and there was no turning back. He was ready to confront the eerie heart of the metropolis. As Solomon delved deeper into the heart of the underground city, the air grew colder, denser, almost thick with ancient secrets. The immense cavern yawned before him, a cavernous mouth speaking in hushed whispers of those who had vanished. His every step echoed through the silence, a solitary rhythm beneath the sprawling city. The monolith before him bore the strange symbol that had marked his path a silent sentinel in the flickering lantern light. Tracing the grooves of the symbol with a hesitant finger, he felt an unsettling pulse beneath the stone, a heartbeat echoing the city's rhythm. As he ventured further, the cavern opened up to narrow, winding paths. They coiled and twisted like frozen serpents, leading him deeper into the labyrinth. The stone underfoot was worn smooth, a testament to countless souls who had walked these paths before him. Evidence of their presence was imprinted in the very fabric of the catacombs, unseen fingerprints on cold stones, echoes of laughter and tears soaked into the earth. In the quieter alcoves, Solomon found remnants of those lost, an old watch, a worn-out shoe, a single earring. Each artifact was a piece of a puzzle, a thread woven into the tapestry of the city's unspoken history. Each item whispered tales of the lost, their stories carried on the silent currents of the underground air. In one such alcove, he found a battered harmonica, its metal body cold to the touch. A haunting melody filled his mind, a melody he'd heard played on cold nights in the alleyway. He remembered its owner, a burly man named John with a love for blues. The chilling realization that John had been taken by this labyrinth brought a knot to Solomon's throat. The walls around him no longer felt like stone, but rather a living, breathing entity, the soul of the city. Each shadow danced with tales of the lost, each echo was a call from the vanished, and each remnant was a plea for rescue. An unease set in, a creeping chill that was more than just the cold, damp air. It was the realization of being trapped in a limbo between the living and the lost, a realm that echoed with the city's deepest fears. He felt as though a thousand eyes watched him from the darkness, their silent pleas pressing against his skin. But Solomon pressed on. The deeper he ventured, the louder the echo of the lost rang in his ears. His heart mirrored their rhythm, a thudding beat that resonated with the eerie pulse of the metropolis above. He was not just a visitor, but a part of this underground realm, an echo seeking answers in the city's silent heart. With every breath, Solomon imbibed the damp chill of the underworld, the air dense with age-old secrets and whispers from the vanished. The lantern's golden glow barely held the shadows at bay as he moved deeper, each footfall a solemn drumbeat in this hallowed labyrinth. An ethereal glow began to permeate the darkness, drawing him towards a vast, open chamber at the labyrinth's heart. This was no ordinary cavern but a cathedral carved by time, immense, solemn, and eerily beautiful. Stalagmites rose from the ground like silent worshippers, reaching towards the cavern's high, shadowed ceiling. The luminescence seemed to emanate from a pool at the chamber's center, a mirror of still water reflecting the cave's dancing shadows. It pulsed gently, rhythmically, radiating an eerie light that imbued the chamber with an otherworldly aura. This was it, the heart of the labyrinth, a sacred altar to the city's lost souls. It was not just the physical core, but a metaphysical center, a knot binding the metropolis above with its underworld. The sense of reverence was overwhelming, a sacred silence that seemed to hum with the resonance of countless lost souls. Suddenly, the pool shivered, as if a pebble had disturbed its surface. An image wavered into view, a ghostly reflection of a gaunt woman. The sight of her hollow eyes and pleading expression sent a chill down Solomon's spine. 
He recognized her. It was Annie, her vibrant spirit now just an echo on the pool's surface. In the pool, Solomon saw more apparitions of the vanished. Faces distorted by fear, pleading for release, their silent screams echoing through the cavern. Their presence filled the chamber, a chorus of the lost resonating with the heartbeat of the city above. The terrifying revelation made Solomon's heart thud against his ribs. He was standing in the lair of an unseen entity, a formidable force that had swallowed his companions. The terror of the labyrinth unveiled itself, a graveyard of echoes, a prison for the city's forgotten. The apparitions surged around him, their muted cries swirling in his mind, a desperate symphony of the lost. A nauseating sense of dread pooled in his gut, making the damp cold of the cave even more piercing. But Solomon held his ground, fueled by the resolve to free the lost souls. The heart of the labyrinth had welcomed him, alone, living soul amongst echoes. But the entity that controlled this realm remained veiled, its ominous presence looming in every shadow. Solomon retreated from the chamber, knowing he wasn't yet equipped to face it. He carried with him the haunting melody of the lost, their whispers seared into his memory, a dirge from the heart of the metropolis that would guide his next move. Emerging from the labyrinth's shadowed depths, Solomon found the city's nocturnal symphony a stark contrast to the hushed whispers of the underworld. His senses felt magnified, the city's mundane noises like a brass band after the silence of the catacombs. The air tasted different here, filled with car exhaust, fried food from late-night diners, and the distant hint of the sea. Haunted by the echoes of the lost, Solomon made his way to the city's grand library, a monolith of knowledge and history towering amidst the sprawling city. Like a moth drawn to a flame, he sought answers within its silent, musty halls. Under the cover of night, he slipped in unnoticed, a specter of the underground surfacing in the world of the living. Rows upon rows of bookshelves stretched out before him, their contents whispering tales of times long past. Hours morphed into one another as he scoured ancient city records, dust-coated maps, and yellowed newspapers. The dim desk lamp threw his elongated shadow onto the towering bookshelves, his figure hunched in silent concentration. Buried in a forgotten corner, he found an old manuscript. Its fragile pages spoke of the city's foundations, of a time when the city was but a promise in the eyes of ambitious settlers. As he delved into the chronicle, an unnerving story unfolded. The city, it seemed, was built over ancient ceremonial grounds, once sacred to a forgotten tribe. A crude illustration in the manuscript caught Solomon's eye, the same symbol that haunted the labyrinth's walls and gate. It represented a powerful spirit of the earth, revered and feared by the tribe. As per the legend, the spirit was trapped in the ceremonial grounds when the city's founders violated the sacred soil. A sense of understanding, cold and shocking, washed over Solomon. The entity beneath the city was no mere specter but an ancient spirit, wronged and wrathful. The realization brought with it a new resolve to confront the entity, to seek a way to appease it. The library, the city's silent, sleeping heart, had shown him the path. He knew now that he had to follow it, to bring peace to the city's heart, and its haunting echoes. Armed with the city's hidden history, Solomon ventured back into the urban maze, his mind a whirlwind of newfound understanding and the weight of the task before him. The metropolis above slept unaware, its dreams undisturbed by the ancient entity that echoed beneath its streets. He sought solace in the familiar alleyways and dim-lit corners, the world he knew before the labyrinth's call. Among the cities discarded and forgotten, he found an ally in Clara, the nocturnal librarian. She was a specter of the night, much like Solomon, her world confined to the library's silence, and the city's ignored corners. Beneath the flickering neon light of an all-night diner, he shared his discoveries with Clara. Her bright, curious eyes clouded with concern as he narrated his encounters with the echoes of the lost, the ominous labyrinth, and the city's buried history. Clara proved to be more than a silent listener. Her academic fascination with ancient cultures sparked a daring plan to return a sacred artifact to the spirit, an act of reconciliation. The artifact was a ceremonial dagger, crucial in the tribe's rituals and stolen by the city's founders. It was now housed in the city museum, a relic of a forgotten past. Stealing the artifact was fraught with risks, but the conviction in Solomon's eyes echoed Clara's own determination. She knew the museum's layout, its security, and, more importantly, she had access. Their plan took shape over cups of lukewarm coffee, their hopes intertwined with the fate of the city's lost souls. 
In the early morning hours, as dawn painted the city with hues of hope, Clara and Solomon parted ways, the librarian with her books and the urban explorer with his labyrinth. Their shared secret hung in the air, a silent promise of the daring act to follow. Solomon, the city's unseen son, found an unexpected ally in his mission, a beacon in the city's forgotten corners. The city's pulse quickened as dawn broke, a cacophony of life oblivious to the daring act unfolding beneath its watch. As the world around them awoke, Clara and Solomon found themselves standing before the city museum, a silent fortress of history and forgotten stories. Disguised as a cleaning crew, they navigated through the museum's towering exhibits, their footfalls muffled on the marble floor. Each hall echoed with whispered tales of the past, but their focus was singular, the ancient ceremonial dagger of the forgotten tribe. Housed within a glass case, under the watchful gaze of the silent stone guardians, the dagger glinted in the museum's dimmed lights, an artifact of time and testament to a silenced past. The bone handle was etched with the familiar symbol, its bronze blade dull with age yet formidable. Clara, with her librarian's finesse and precision, disabled the security system while Solomon carefully lifted the artifact. The dagger was heavier than it looked, a weight not of its material but of its history and significance. As they exited the museum, the city's dawn chorus reached its crescendo. Yet, within Solomon's coat pocket, the stolen dagger rested silent and ominous, a key to the underworld, to the echoes of the lost. With the artifact safely in their possession, Solomon felt an odd kinship with the city's founders, the same path, but a reverse journey not to trap, but to liberate the ancient spirit. He bid Clara a quiet goodbye, their unlikely alliance etched in the city's unrecorded history. It was time to return to the labyrinth. Solomon descended into the metropolis's underbelly, the familiar cold greeting him like an old friend. Armed with more than just his lantern this time, he ventured deeper into the shadows, the weight of the dagger a constant reminder of his purpose. The city above, with its roaring life, faded into a distant memory as he delved further into the underworld. The labyrinth welcomed him back, its cold, damp air whispering ancient secrets, the spectral echoes of the lost guiding him. His journey was far from over, his mission not yet accomplished. The heart of the labyrinth awaited, throbbing in the darkness, a testament to the city's pulsating terror and its only hope for liberation. The ancient spirit's lair lay before Solomon, as eerie and forbidding as when he'd first stumbled upon it. The chamber's luminescent pool reflected his weary but determined gaze, painting his face in ethereal hues. The ceremonial dagger weighed heavily in his grasp, a symbol of restitution from a city unaware of its ancient debt. The cavern seemed to breathe in rhythm with him, every exhale stirring the stale air. It was as if the spirit sensed his presence, the chamber's glow pulsating in response. He was not alone, the echoes of the lost swirled around him, their spectral forms mirrored in the shimmering pool. As he stepped closer to the pool, Solomon felt a presence materializing from the shadows. It did not have a physical form, but its essence was clear, a congregation of the lost, a manifestation of their fear and despair. The apparition hovered above the pool, the faces of the vanished woven into its being. They were trapped, their souls bound to the entity, their echoes resonating in the labyrinth. Solomon could feel their longing for release, their desire for peace. With a deep breath, he held the dagger out towards the apparition, an offer of peace and an apology from the metropolis above. The chamber pulsed in response, the spectral apparition reaching out for the artifact. The dagger, caught in the entity's ethereal grasp, lifted from Solomon's hand, hanging suspended in the air. Silence descended upon the chamber, every echo hushed as if holding its breath. The dagger, radiating an otherworldly glow, sliced through the entity's form. Instead of causing harm, it severed the invisible chains binding the lost to the labyrinth. A sigh echoed through the chamber, a collective release of the lost, their spectral faces illuminating with peace. One by one, their echoes faded, leaving behind the quiet hum of the labyrinth. The ceremonial dagger dropped into the luminescent pool, its duty served. The entity, now free from its bindings, faded into the chamber's shadows, its grip on the city released. Solomon stood alone in the heart of the labyrinth, the silence punctuated only by the occasional drip of water. The echo of the lost was gone, replaced with a calm that seeped into the very stones of the underground city. The spirit was at peace, and so were the city's lost souls. His mission was complete, but the weight of his journey clung to him like the cavern's damp chill. 
As he ascended to the world above, the labyrinth lay silent and still behind him, an echo of its haunting past and a monument of his daring journey. Solomon emerged from the underground, his body weary but his spirit lifted. As the sun broke the horizon, bathing the city in its warm morning glow, the metropolis hummed with renewed life. Unseen by its inhabitants, the city's underbelly pulsed calmly, no longer a haunting dirge but a quiet lullaby. The alleyways welcomed him back, their familiar corners and nooks untouched by the horrors he had faced beneath the city streets. Yet, he was not the same man who had first descended into the labyrinth. He had faced the echoes of the lost, battled an ancient entity, and returned, forever changed. With the city's lost souls at peace, Solomon found a new purpose. His connection to the city had deepened, the metropolis's pulse now an intimate rhythm echoing his own heartbeat. No longer just a spectator to its life, he had become a protector, a guardian of the city's forgotten. He used his knowledge of the catacombs to provide shelter for the homeless, navigating them through safe routes, away from the heart of the labyrinth. His tale spread in hushed whispers among the cities overlooked, a modern-day urban legend of the city's savior from the underworld. Clara, the unlikely ally from the world above, became a regular part of his life. They shared stories over cups of coffee at the all-night diner, their bond strengthened by their shared secret. Her bright laughter became a beacon of hope in his world, as precious as the first rays of dawn breaking through a night of darkness. In the labyrinth beneath the city, the ceremonial dagger rested at the bottom of the luminescent pool, a symbol of peace between two worlds. The echo of the lost had quieted, their spectral faces at peace in the city's memory. Solomon's tale ended where it began, in the heart of the sprawling metropolis. From its shadowed alleyways to the forgotten labyrinth beneath, he had uncovered its secrets, faced its horrors, and emerged victorious. He was Solomon, the city's unseen son, the echo of the lost, the guardian of the metropolis. His life was forever intertwined with the city's pulse, a harmony that resonated in the silence of the underground and the hum of the world above. And so, dear listeners, we emerge from the shadows of the city's underground forever changed, carrying the echoes of the lost within us. Solomon's tale serves as a reminder that heroes often walk unseen, their battles fought in the darkness, their victories echoing in silence. We hope this journey into the hidden corners of our city has left you with a chill down your spine and a glance over your shoulder. Thank you for braving the depths with us on our scary stories. I'm your host, reminding you that when the city sleeps, its secrets stir. Until next time, keep your lanterns lit and your spirits brave. This is our Scary Stories signing off for tonight.